Welcome to Star Talks powered by AdvoTalks. Today, we have with us our most esteemed guest, advocate Rachna Shroff. Rachna Shroff is a distinguished gaming and technology lawyer. She is also a revered educator and a visionary founder of Laws with Rachna. She has been mentoring many aspiring legal professionals. Ms. Rachna brings on board a wealth of expertise cultivated through extensive experience of one and a half decade across a spectrum of industries like NBFCs, iron and steel, leading law firms in Asia and gaming companies. A gold medalist in MBA, Rachna has seamlessly integrated her role as an in-house counsel. She has also been associated with the art of living for almost 17 years and conducted the happiness programs as a faculty for the past five years, igniting positivity and mindfulness in the lives of countless individuals. Today, she has joined us in Star Talks to express her views and experiences on various aspects of exploring the world of gaming and esports law. I should admit that I am quite excited to host her. With that, I warmly welcome Rachna Shroff to our talk show, Star Talks, powered by Advotox. Hi, Siraj. Thank you for such a wonderful welcome. Looking forward to this uh, podcast. Right, ma'am. So uh, let's start with understanding your journey. Like what has inspired you to become a gaming lawyer at the first place? And uh, can you also explain for our audience what gaming law encompasses? Sure. Uh, thanks for asking that. So how did it happen? I've been answering things all this time that it just happened to me. It is not a planned move. Um, and yes, um, I want to make it very clear that gaming is a part of technology laws. It's a subset, like you have pharma, you have fintech, you have edtech, you have many other tech, tech, tech. So is digital uh, and so is gaming. And right now, even the government has uh, supported it for game of skill. And, you know, there are rules and regulations around it. And it's a part of the version of the trillion uh, trillion dollar economy that India is looking towards. Uh, um, that's all I want to say about gaming. And I should say uh, to everybody listening that please look at your niche in Mika Karyor. It's a booming industry. It's really shaping up very well. Great, ma'am. Great. That's quite interesting. Uh, you know, And uh, uh, I wanted you to touch upon what are these common misconceptions basically about the gaming law that you often encounter in your uh, uh, you know practice. Yes. Um, so the thing is that gaming is a very wide area. Yeah. There is uh, something called fantasy. There is game of skill and game of chance, lotteries, casinos, sports betting, esports. Yeah. They all are different genres. They all have different rules and regulations. Esports is a different sector altogether. Fantasy falls into game of skill. Other games are also falling in the game of skill. Whereas uh, lotteries, casinos, or sports betting are different genres, different categories. They may not be so, you know, so-called legalized, a few categories, yeah? So uh, people fail to understand that gaming is not equal to gambling and vice versa, yeah? Gaming, gambling is a totally different category. It's not a game of skill. It's a game of chance, which is dependent on luck. Whereas when we speak about gaming, we're speaking about mostly game of skill, where there is the most important judgments by the Supreme Court, let down 70 years back, are still ruling the uh, industry and being followed till date. Yeah, And that is where game of skill falls under the category of gaming. So please understand, gaming is not gambling. Right, ma'am. Thanks for bringing that uh, differentiation, like the categorization, as you mentioned, game of skill and stuff like that. I guess there are a lot to understand, especially on the aspect of bifurcation of the esports as well. So we would go uh, one by one uh, for a discussion, Rachna. So we wanted to know some legal challenges that, that are associated today in the gaming industry. Oh, uh, I tell you, Siraj, uh, six years down the lane, uh, when I started into gaming, Every day, there used to be an explanation from my side 
to either an individual, to a set of people, or to the best of lawyers because we wanted to tell them that gaming is not gambling and we used to make them understand the operational side, the financial side, everything of the business to tell them of how this game is. So the question of whether, you know, uh, this uh, game has now evolved. The game has evolved with because the mindset of the people have evolved. They've understood the difference somewhere. And the challenges have been at every sector. Whereas if you want to onboard a payment uh, wallet, yeah, so that the players can come in and put in their money in play, right? And they also can, you know, extract. There were challenges in getting those also onboarded because they again did not understand the differentiation. Yeah. If you were supposed to bring a tool on board in your system, that was also a challenge. Yeah. If you're supposed to bring in investors, that was also a challenge. So these challenges were there. But now, because the IT rules have brought in gaming as a part of the IT rules itself, which has given definitions of what online gaming means or what real money gaming means, what uh, will categorize as game of skills, what are the compliances to be followed by these companies who are running the gaming platforms, yeah, the operators. Now the um, ministry is also looking at forming a mechanism around it, an independent body, which would be, you know, under surveillance and would be surveillance of the METI. And then this body would be capturing of what all this industry is doing, right? So a lot weightage has come in because government has recognized it. And the challenges are now not that much. It is at that stage where it is evolving and growing. Absolutely, ma'am. Absolutely. Like you said, like the ambit uh, is definitely covering the uh, multiple stakeholders, like the players, as you mentioned, the organizers are rather, uh, we can say the persons uh, or the companies who are organizing the sports as well as, you know, maybe the providers of the esports. So we will try to a uh, little bit dive deeper. So with the available ambit and the regulations in place, so what is the opportunity that esports are presenting us in terms of the player contracts and rights? The opportunity is enormous in terms of esports. The esports is giving a lot of value to young generation. Yeah, and that, that is not only limiting them to just play. If you have a passion, you can make a career. Recently, I was here at one of the finals, which is this, known as College Rivals for Esports. And it was full of youth, you know, the entire college student crowd was there. And uh, they were winning out the finals and a huge sum of money going to them. And they're getting into contracts with major companies to play for them. Yeah, so it's a real big opportunity. It is legalized, called as a sport, and it is under the Youth and Sports Ministry, just like other sports are, yeah. But let me again tell you, it is different from that of the categorization of gaming here. So don't confuse that. Right. And uh, uh, contracts, there are many contracts in the esports department, yeah. You will need to have your set of lawyers to do it for you, be it from the organization or be it from the player's side. But there's merchandising, there's licensing, there is sponsorship, and there is, of course, the main contract that is between the sports play all and the uh, organization or the team you were being a part of. Yeah? So all these regulations are not only limited to a particular law, there is no esports law per se in India, but yes, we are ruled by contracts, we are ruled by IT, we are ruled by every other law that is applicable in the digital mechanism and the common law that is applicable to all. Yes, ma'am, looks like it's a, it's a uh, you know, diversified, uh, you know, laws that we may need to kind of you know uh, perceive and then understand how they can be uh, used in the esports as such so i would like to uh, you know understand from you so how do you see the landscape of esports sponsorship and the advertisement agreements evolving from a legal standpoint uh, rashna ma'am all good we have the uh, guidelines in place follow them whether you're an advertiser or you're an influencer follow the guidelines there are very prominent guidelines out there. You have contracts, follow the contract rules. That's it. Great, great, great. That's a huge opportunity out there, uh, uh, you know, in that space. So let's understand how does the intellectual property law influence the esports industry, particularly regarding the gaming franchises and the team branding, uh, likewise. So let me tell you whether you speak about 
game of chance, game of skill, or you speak about esports, all are marketing, and you know they have their brand agencies which do a lot of marketing for them, build their repute, build their goodwill. And in my gaming company, which I was last working with as their lead council, I handled a portfolio of 300 IP assets. So IP is very, very important. From your logo to your device mark, to your slogan, to your jingle, to that ad which that you're creating, have a check on trademarks, have a check on copyright. There will not be a single day when I don't work on IPs. Yeah. Similarly, it's for the esports player because they are really having a great community base. They have a lot of fanship, right? So they need to protect their brand. They need to protect their IDs by which they are known. Right. Recently, when I met this final winner in uh, college rivals, I asked him, I remember his name was Washish, but he said, hey, do you know my handle is you, uh, something called Lassie? So these kind of tags, they need to be protected immediately because you're becoming renowned and you're generating a lot of repute and goodwill, just like you you have I do that talks. I have lost with Rachna. We need right. to protect our brands. And intellectual property is, uh, is not even the... Uh, is the gold. I say it's the platinum and it's not the diamond because of digitalization and more so with AI coming in. Yeah, but because the clash that is happening, you should be more aware in protecting your IP. Uh, because um, earlier I, we used to identify few laws as basic laws for lawyers. I'm saying now when you identify contracts as a basic skill for a lawyer, also identify intellectual property as a basic skill for a lawyer. It is that uh, important now. Absolutely, ma'am. There is a lot of significance that, uh, as you rightly pointed out, especially about the intellectual properties. And then when it comes to the franchising and the branding, so these are definitely something which cannot be decoupled. So let's move. Uh, a bit of um, uh, excitement is more from the miners' perspective. I wanted to understand, like, uh, uh, as a community, like, um, uh, what measures are being taken to protect the miners who participate in the esports at a professional level? they have to get their guardians to sign it off the permission has to be taken there and that is how the contracts develop right and um, yeah so the parents are being careful about it and uh, they know that if that person is really going to make it they're allowing them so that's fine if it is well taken care of where your guardians are involved absolutely the role of the guardians as you mentioned is definitely a key over here Okay, thanks for bringing that, um, uh, Rachna. So we wanted to understand there are, uh, you know, multiple instances of potential cyber bullying, harassment, and uh, kind of you know security concerns in esports. Uh, you know, what are the steps that are being taken to address from a legal standpoint? There are uh, still, I would say, that we really need to have a very robust system in terms of cyber law, and uh, I would say that. Uh, we uh, still need to buckle up ourselves in stopping this and uh, it's happening very rampantly. I will tell you that people are not even addressing of what's actually happening. Yes, uh, only the big platforms where it's happening, we get to hear a little bit. Otherwise, I tell you that earlier it used to be physical problems as in in the real world. Now all the crimes are going to move digital. It has already moved. It is just that People are not speaking so rampantly about it. But when we have the laws, we will have litigations following and then we will actually get to know what is the numbers and these numbers are scary. Yeah. So I would just right. say that we really need to buckle up and we need to have very strong laws. I'm looking forward to Digital India Act. I'm looking forward to digital competition law. It's the need of the hour. Okay, ma'am, we have uh, quite touched on uh, multiple aspects of the gaming and the esports. So, um, uh, what are your advices for uh, the aspiring gaming lawyers out there? So, those who are interested in the field, uh, Rajna. Absolutely. Just as you said, that you touched on multiple aspects. That's what I wanted to say. That do you see how many laws are involved when we speak about gaming and esports? Yeah. So, it's not like that you would be dealing with one set of laws. And more interestingly, I just want to touch on this point. When you deal with gaming, gaming is a state subject also. Yet, this is still to be decided, though it has been recognized by the central ministry. So since it's a state subject, you don't deal with one act. Yeah, you deal with act for each state. Right. Yeah, so it's not easy. You have to deal with a bundle of law 
every law under technology and this technology is evolving the laws are evolving evolving you will be you know really on your toes i can tell you the amount of exposure i have had in the last 6 7 years it is more than that of a decade yeah because the challenges were so much and i put myself all out there as an in the house counsel if you think you can just sit on your chair and solve the issues no, no, it's not happening. You will be actually moving around the country to solve issues from going to courts, to meeting agencies, to meeting ministries, holding conferences, meetings, and then coming back at your decks and pulling out the work internally and externally. Yeah. So it's a lot of things to be done. If you're that dynamic, if you're ready to learn and give it your all, then this industry is for you. Absolutely, ma'am. I think like uh, for all those aspirants out there, so these are the inputs. So you have to be on your toes and uh, there are multiple places that you may have to actually travel and reach and talk to multiple stakeholders that you may have to work with. Uh, uh, that's from Rachna. So I am trying to understand from you, how do you navigate the intersection of technology and the law in the gaming sector, especially? <laughs> It is, you know, I would not like to even use the word intersection. And sometimes we will get a space so yep. technology and law would be moving together. Yeah, you see uh, papers are turning into laptops and drives are happening. Yeah, even with the courts, we're seeing the Supreme Courts working in the with the laptops, yeah, getting dig digitalized. Yeah, so I would not like to say we are in more at intersection. It's the time when we really need to adapt technology because Next thing is metaverse. Next thing is Web3. Yeah. Next thing is AI. If you don't adapt to it, then you do it. And then, you know, people say, oh, I don't have a job or I am facing crisis. Guys, it's time to get going. Yeah. It's time when the world is changing. You got to keep moving, right? Flow with it. Then you don't feel challenged. Like, how do we use Instagram? Because it's it interests us. How do we use WhatsApp? Because it's need of VR. Right. Similarly, when there was something called Orkut to Facebook to Twitter, we all adapted to. Similarly, you better get used to all of this rather okay. than calling yourself challenged and just know that this is how the world is going to move. Yeah. Absolutely. So be at it, learn it and get going. I should say that you guys are the forerunners of the coming times. Yeah. Just adapt it into your systems and let them know that you are ready to meet the world. Absolutely, ma'am. That's quite, um, uh, you know, suggesting about, you know, how to uh, be on toes on, you know, the uh, technological advancements, like you mentioned about the evolution of multiple platforms, uh, be it social media, like the Orkut, Facebook and uh, stuff like that. So we have to definitely adopt and then... Uh, uh, from the legal fraternity, we are not really, uh, you know, any exception. So we have to be on the toes. Okay. Thanks a lot for uh, bringing a lot of, um, uh, you know, aspects on the, uh, you know, professionals and the aspirants aspect as well. So lastly, can you recommend some resources for individuals who are interested in learning more about the gaming laws? Yes, certainly. Um, I would like to definitely say, uh, please start reading news. Start identifying companies, follow them, yeah? Read their articles, read their uh, newsletters, yeah? And read the laws in consonants. You can get ready by that, that's one, yeah? There are a lot of conferences that happen, attend that. And if you're a student, you can always ask for a student's pass, yeah? It might not even cost you. Then just like I keep going for every uh, gaming conference, Get yourself out there, meet people, network, but definitely read news, articles. Uh, to my best knowledge, I know that there is no a particular book yet on gaming laws. Yeah. Uh, if I can add this, I just want to tell through your platform that I take a gaming laws course, which is a certificate course. Uh, and I'm really happy because I have been able to give that out, which I wanted to share. Yeah, because there are so many experiences which happen when you are on the foot, on the go, which you don't actually find in books, yeah? Yeah, so I take that up. People can come in for that also. And um, I think this is very, very good way. Reading uh, conferences. And I think uh, writing, writing is very Absolutely. important. Absolutely. Uh, 
I have told a lot of my students, they all have done this. Many of them have done this. They've written papers on TV. You know, research yes. publications, they went into moods and all that has happened in this all this while. And uh, they felt amazing by doing that because of that, they learned so much. Yeah. So I think students who are in uh, still in this law school, they can do moods, publications, articles. Yes, yes. yes absolutely, ma'am. Like uh, today, the magic is definitely on the networking that you have mentioned um uh, quite nicely and also the resources that you mentioned are like endless reading is one uh, such habit that you have to adopt on you know the uh, content that we wanted to target uh, as well as today the world is actually moving towards the creation of the content as you mentioned like the publications the research papers and stuff like that participating in the in the moot courts and uh, also in the conferences give, gives you an edge to kind of you know keep yourself on, uh, you know, the updated note as well as, uh, uh, you know, gives you an opportunity to uh, network yourself and uh, uh, kind of, you know, that is going to be definitely very helpful. Ashna, I think the uh, discussion has been uh, quite interesting and insightful. Um, uh, but as far as time is concerned, it brings us to a break here. So uh, uh, that's the end of the great insightful conversation uh, with you. Thanks for helping us and our audience understand the various aspects of um, navigating the world of gaming and esports law. We appreciate you for taking time and sharing invaluable advice. Thanks a lot again from Advotox. Thank you so much, Siraj, for having me over. I really enjoyed talking and thank you for the varied questions so that it opened the gamut of arena and I could actually, you know, speak about so many things. It is lovely to be here. So viewers, that's about today's episode with advocate Rachna Shroff, which brings a good understanding about the world of gaming and esports law as well. We hope this conversation was knowledgeable. For getting more such updates and information on legal concepts, please visit our website www.advotox.com and don't forget to like, share and subscribe to our YouTube channel, Advotox. Sure. Thank you.